بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم My brothers and sisters marriage is a sacred union and it's one that is filled with sacrifice the more you sacrifice the better that relationship will be but you don't always have to sacrifice as much as another person or compare it to another person the reason i say this is because when we choose a spouse we should be choosing based on certain qualities and we don't do that so that's where the first problem is when i say we don't do that i'm talking of the youth the generations those who are looking for spouses those who have just married etc a lot of the times the the world has put pressure on us to choose a spouse based on looks number one number one based on looks automatically the dean sometimes comes out of the equation the character and conduct comes out of the equation we want a woman who will walk next to us who or a husband who will be walking with us who people will say wow wow you did well you did well just by looking <laughs> but that's not it where is the taqwa where is allah in this whole equation surely you should have involved allah from the point of choice I'm not saying don't look at what a person looks like but the that shouldn't be the main point the main point is to see whether or not they have a consciousness of Allah because we were brought up totally differently you know the husband in a different home the wife in a different home in fact if you're related closer than a certain point you're not even allowed to get married so Allah wants you to marry people who've been raised in a totally different home as such. And if that is the case, there will be differences. There have to be differences. You know, the earlier question was about communication. And I was busy thinking whilst my colleagues were, were speaking that communication is so important that we should not feel bad when a spouse raises what's in the heart because if we cannot take what the spouse is saying to us about us or about the relationship then why be related to them through marriage you have to be ready to take what they're going to say some will say it in a nice way some will say it in any other way i am quite a blunt person when it comes to my spouse and i expect my family to be as blunt with me because i love it i need to know what's going on i need to know you know X, Y, and Z for X, Y, and Z. You don't start with A and you pretend like Z is going to be understood by the person just because I said A, B, C, D. And they must understand, okay, this is ending at Z. Because many people don't address matters. They just speak about things around the matters. So, number one, we need to make the choice based on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thereafter, when we have an issue, remember, if your aim is the pleasure of Allah, and your spouse's aim is the pleasure of Allah to be achieving Jannatul Firdaus, it will automatically minimize your problems. If your aim is monetary, if your aim is, for example, something else, if your aim in marriage is to please your friends or to please someone else, etc., etc., it may not even work. But if it is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that statement is very important because some people use it and some people abuse it i know of a case where there was a man who was not spending on his family so when we started addressing him and found out that it was true he was not spending on his family yet he had he said well, the the aim is to earn jannah so why do i need to spend on them i said whose aim yours or theirs so he says well their aim should be also to earn the pleasure of Allah and Jannah. I said, hang on. To earn Jannah, you should spend on your family. To earn Jannah. So you're using Allah's name in order to justify the ill that you're doing because of a quality you have in you, which is miserliness or in my language, you know, stinginess. Subhanallah. And you're trying to put Allah's name in there. And unfortunately, people do this in marriage. Some people say men do it very often. They, they, they use what is now called as religious blackmail to, to come up with something to tell their spouse, well, if you don't do this, you know, Allah's going to punish you and Allah's going to do this and do that. So when we talk of bringing Allah in the equation, let's be fair. 
Let's be very fair. You want Allah in the equation, Allah must be in the equation for both of us. And we must be able to develop a relationship with Allah such that we realize who is this person and what is this relationship. So this is my wife or this is my husband. This is going to be or is already the mother or the father of my children. So that will already help you to, to resolve matters, to be able to speak to one another, address the issue and try and resolve it, speak about it, bearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in mind and being fair. Wouldn't you agree that we're looking at the women, the sisters, and telling them you have to be kind, you have to be polite, you have to be nice, you have to seek forgiveness, you have to be sweet, you have to, your husband will melt and so on. But this guy is a rock, he's not an ice cream, subhanallah. I think the men need to be told the same thing, subhanallah. They need to, because I've come across, I've come across cases where the men, they appear religious, but the wife will say he's a drunkard, he drinks alcohol. And who talks to him? I can't even believe it. How can I even address him? Subhanallah. And you know what? He does prostitutes. May Allah forgive us. And you know what else? He is this and he is that and he gambles and he whatever and he beats and he this. And sometimes because of his distance from Allah, the woman is trying everything. But when he looks at her, he only is clouded by the sin that he's involved in. So we need to remember that too is another side of a problem that exists in many, many homes. Perhaps it's becoming a lot of those who have problems. Actually, the problem could just well be the husband. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help me to be the best possible husband. Amin. I didn't hear the Amin. And may Allah help every one of the men here to be the best husbands. I promise you, my beloved brothers, if you are as sweet as honey and even sweeter, then you are entitled to call her honey. MashaAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. Alright. Well, he is saying, pray for the sisters. My beloved Sheikh, I am not yet over. You know? Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the brothers. And I want the brothers to pray for the sisters, inshallah. <laughs> we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us. Really, the reality is we both need to work on ourselves. Let's define our character. When the Prophet says, khiyarukum ahasinukum akhlaqan, the best from amongst you are those who are best in character and conduct. Wallahi, the fruit of that term, the best, is already tasted in this world the minute you develop your character. So be the best possible husband. Cut out the rubbish that you may be involved in and you will see the cloudy vision that you had all along regarding your spouse suddenly becoming clear and you notice the value of your spouse because you have understood the value of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless both the brothers and the sisters and all of us and our offspring upwards who come up to the day of Qiyamah.